Welcome back to the channel. This is Gillis TV here on Clemhawks, and today we got some Oilers lineups and news ahead of their matchup versus the Buffalo Sabres tonight at Rogers Place at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Now, before I get started, I just want to thank you guys for all the support on the channel the last few months. It's been really appreciated. I know I haven't been around due to work. But hey, I'm back and I'm loving it. But on that note, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button, and turn those notifications off for more hockey news around the league. And we do MLB and other things on this channel as well. But let's get into it. Uh, Jason Greger t posted in the Twitter world that Derek Ryan is still on the ice 15 minutes after... Everyone else, usually a sign of not playing tonight. Looks like the Oilers will go 11-7 and seven with Nima Linen playing as the 7th defenseman. Lineups most likely for 11-7. Kane, McDavid, Yamamoto, Hyman, Drysaddle, Pugliarvi, Holloway, R&H, Fogle, Shore, and McLeod on that fourth line with someone swapping in throughout the game. On defense, you got Nurse and CeCe, Kulak and Barry, Murray and Bouchard, like I said, Nemo Linen as the seventh defenseman, and making his season start tonight is Stuart Skinner, who was ultimately scheduled for this start, but after his play for the Calgary Flames, it was guaranteed he was starting. He showed up and shined for the Edmonton Oilers in that game. After Calgary got to Jack Campbell with four goals, Stuart Skinner gave the Edmonton Oilers a really good chance to win that game. That was a huge game by Stuart Skinner to keep the Edmonton Oilers in it. As we just see Buffalo score on Jack Campbell. And it was an optional skate today as McDavid, Yamamoto, Fogel, McLeod, Ryan, Holloway, Nurse, Kulak, Bouchard, Murray, and Nimalina were all skaters. And Skinner and Campbell were both there too. So with this game, this is a huge game for them into Oilers, especially their defense. The last two games, first periods, haven't been friendly. The Oilers have been getting... To slow starts, giving up the first two, three goals in a game, trying to play catch up. It worked on Wednesday versus the Vancouver Canucks. I was at that game with Dolan ETV and Patrick himself from the Oilers Fanatic. But they need to get out, play a full 60. This game is not a full 40 minute game, it's 60 minutes. Get out there, get your legs under you. Start winning the battles. You cannot go down t again by two goals to start a game and hope that you come back from it. It just doesn't work that way. The defense needs help from the forwards. Yeah, okay. Jack Campbell and Nett, you can't blame him for every goal he let in over the course of the last two starts he had. The Pedersen one where... No one helped him out, and it was him versus Pedersen. Pedersen banks it off of him. Can't deal with that. You know, letting Calgary walk in on him the other night. Can't do that. We need a full 60 minutes from the Edmonton Oilers team. We need that 60-minute pressure they found in the second half of the season last year that got them to the Western Conference Finals. That is the team that needs to show up. That is the team everyone's expecting, and so far it has not been that team. Credit is due where it's due. After the first period, both games, they came out flying. Even um, Michael Stone, after the second period was, the other night, said that straight up. Edmonton came out firing. Edmonton was a better team, different team than that first period. We need that team for a full 60. We need to play defense. We need to win in the neutral zone. Make great passes. We all know that Edmonton's power play and we have a potent offense are the reasons Edmonton win games. 
Well, the league has taken that to notice about the power play and has been, you know, lenient on the other team gang penalties, knowing that that's Edmonton's game changer. When Dolany TV and I were at that Vancouver Canucks game, we, the power plays were 8-4, to four, I believe, in favor of Vancouver, 8-3 to three in favor of Vancouver. There were penalties that should have been called on Vancouver that didn't. One, for instance, the puck was on the left-hand corner boards, and Luke Shen is tying up Leon Dreisaitl on the right-hand boards on the ice. No call. Because the league knows they call too many penalties on the other teams against Edmonton. Edmonton is going to have a really good chance of scoring on that power play. That's the problem, is now they don't want to play favorites, so the game's not getting called fair. They need to work on that, I know. It's been a thing I've noticed over the last year and a half or so. As you see, my game was updated. But, that is one they need to work on. And Edmonton can't rely on the power play to get them back into games. It's worked the last two games, got them back in. Edmonton needs to start scoring 5-on-5 five five here. If that means loading up the first line of Kane, McDavid, Drysell, do it. Edmonton has the players to run two lines with that line being a single line. Boston's done it for years. The Edmonton Oilers can eventually do it with guys like Holloway, McLeod stepping up, and then, you know, guys like Carter Savoy in the near future coming up for the Oilers and playing a huge part in the team's offense that way. Now, like I said, we need a full 60 minutes from the Edmonton Oilers, not a full 40 minutes. You can't leave your goaltender out to dry. Stuart Skinner last game, he was left out of the dry at the start of when he came in. There were some grade A scoring chances for Calgary. Stuart Skinner held it, held the back end there. We know what Stuart Skinner can do. He's still technically a rookie. He only played, what, 12 games last year? 13 games without being substituted in there. Stuart Skinner can hold the back end, but he needs some defensive help. And that starts with everyone getting back, playing defense, covering their man. You know, it is what it is. But we need Edmonton to come back. Play a full 60. I know I'm rumbling about a full 60. Now, let's look at the lineups here. Nima line is sliding in as the seventh defenseman. This is huge for them into Oilers as Nima Linen's become a fan favorite for a lot of people with the fact that he's a hardcore physical guy that can take the body, that can play defense. He can go up against other teams top end players and shut them down. That is what I like about Nima Linen. I'm excited to see what he does tonight and it's going to make competition on that back line. Just because you were here for the opening roster doesn't always mean that you're staying. We could see for instance a Bouchard mistake and Nima Linen plays more than Bouchard after that. We could see Ryan Murray step up, play a phenomenal game, and bypass Brett Kulak. It is possible. There is competition on this back line now. I'm excited to see that, especially for the Edmonton Oilers, because we need it. We need a guy like Nima Linen on the back end that plays a physical shutdown game that everyone likes to see. And he's done that. We've seen the hits he's laid on other guys th throughout last season. It is huge to have a guy like that that understands the defensive aspect of the game while understanding the physical aspect as well. Uh, in other news, Ryan Rashog tweeted, uh, Stuart Skinner shaved, I guess. He's clean shaven. Hopefully he didn't get rid of that mustache. That mustache is his signature trait. But let's go through the Twitter world here. Uh... So, what Jason Greger's game notes here, 
Sabres have contained McDavid better than every team in the NHL, but one, seriously, they have. Oilers looking to avoid another slow start. We hit that. Can Buffalo's young D court handle McDavid and dry settle? Well, there we go. Is they have a young D core that is newer to the league. Owen Power is really good. Dalian's still young in a sense. Can the Edmonton Oilers take advantage of this young D core and pour it on? They got Samuelson on the back end as well. So this is where McDavid and Drysaddle being on separate lines will be a headache for the Buffalo's defense as they're playing two of the best players in the world. And I say two of because we can't just say, yeah, we got the one-two. Yes, we do have the one-two best players, but there's a lot of really good players in the world. So they're not used to playing a one-two punch like McDavid and Dreisel. They weren't around when Crosby and Malkin were a one-two punch. Toronto doesn't have a one-two punch because, you know, it's Toronto and they like to lose to Arizona. That is a shot to Toronto, by the way. I hope you guys like that. But at the same time, we got to take advantage of this young decor that isn't very veteran heavy. You know, don't, don't have a lot of games under their belts. And with the speed McDavid possesses, that can we see another unbelievable goal? I am just rambling now. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to make this video nine minutes long, and it's uh, taking kind of forever to make nine minutes. But like I said, let's go Oilers, and you know what? Let's go for the win. No slow starts. Let's put four in the back of the net by halfway through the game. I will be happy, and I believe the Skinner will stand on his head, allowing less than two goals tonight, two or less goals, and Edmonton wins five to two tonight is my prediction but anyway that is it for me i hope you guys enjoy this video sorry for all the rambling tried to make it longer than three minutes long with all the lineups but you guys are fantastic like i said thank you guys for all the support really appreciate it i'll talk to you on the next one